Well, today we come to the cross again, but differently. Yesterday it was with exultation and the glory and joy of the cross. Joy, meaning the salvation that was brought to us all, uh, was the picture we looked at. But today we come to the cross again, and this time we stand there by the side with Mary, and we, we get to hear this conversation or this one-way conversation take place. Imagine, Jesus is dying, slowly but surely, bleeding to death, in unspeakable pain and total rejection. And he speaks and reaches out to his mother and to John. Can you imagine that? He, he is, is pastoral, he's loving, he's, he's encouraging them, he's securing his mother's future. Um, apparently, Joseph is dead, I guess. He's not in the picture. But there she is, standing there. And I often reflect upon Mary when I'm at the deathbed of somebody and there's family around, because to me, that's the time that people are like Mary. Uh, what can they do if someone is dying? What can they do if somebody's in awful pain? And, and many times they, they say nothing, they do nothing. They just stand there, just stand by the side of the one suffering, or maybe take their hand. I often encourage people, touch the person who is dying. I, I think that the human touch is very helpful in healing. But there she was, standing there. And then what Jesus says, mother, behold your son, behold your mother. And he brought them into a tiny but real community of love to take care of them and to encourage them. You know, of course the cross, I, I, I just say, is an awful place. But what is striking to me in its awfulness is how full of love it is and how um, life-giving it is and was. And I think that, that that's the reason I, I tell people when I do funerals often, um, I tell them the story of this cross because I never liked the cross on the back wall. It, to me, it was hidden almost, you know. And I remember at least one person telling me that the first time they ever walked into this church, they were so thrilled because of the risen Christ up there. It said it's so encouraging. And I felt just the opposite. I mean, it's beautiful, and it is encouraging. But there's the mystery. There's the great mystery. Without the cross, we wouldn't have that. And and it's not just that there was a cross, but how that cross was, how much Jesus could love and forgive from that cross. I mean, that teaches volumes, and it's, it's a mystery because it isn't always uh, that we're capable of doing it. I mean, sometimes our angers or resentments or our past is just too much, and, or we think we've forgiven, and we have with the head, but not with the heart. And so to me, that is a mystery that we have to keep um, taking into our lives. We've got to learn forgiveness. Forgiveness is, forgiveness is the way that we go on. Forgiveness and love is, you know, uh, the hatred is this, clenching. Uh, not forgiving is clenching. It closes us down. It's a weight to carry around. But to love and forgive opens us. It's, it's enduring. It, it's life-giving. It's eternal. It's eternal. And so today, with great thanks, as we celebrate this other side of the cross, the sorrowful side, even in the midst of sorrow, we see such love and, and such caring for Jesus' mother by Jesus, by the one who is dying and suffering. And hopefully it speaks to us, calls to us, invites us, opens us up to learn the same, to do the same. Please stand.